G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. So after releasing my intercooler fan video a few weeks ago, I received a huge response in positive and negative feedback in relation to my conclusion. So today we're gonna to be doing some more testing. We're down here on the south coast of Western Australia in Esperance. We're gonna do some testing under some more heavy load conditions with some lower speeds uh, in sand, both on beach runs and in some inland dunes as well, to see exactly what sort of difference these fans make in this, uh, this type of environment. So guys, just before we start, I just wanna make it very clear that by no means am I uh, claiming to be a mechanic or know everything there is to know about vehicles, in particular these 200 series Land Cruisers. The idea of exploring Oz in this particular channel is just to show you guys what we do and what I've done to this cruiser and what results I get. We're here to provide, demonstrate, and then explain the findings we get for this particular cruiser. Now the key here is that it is this particular cruiser. There are gonna be so many factors that will affect your vehicle and your driving style, whether it be towing, environment, weather, uh, the size of your tires, the weight of the vehicle, all these things will affect the type of results you're going to get from different modifications you do to your car. So in relation to the intercooler fans, I'm just as disappointed as the next person and this is the fact that they didn't work at highway speeds. I'm the one sitting with uh, $400 worth of fans sitting in my garage that are not bolted to my car at the moment and therefore I'm at a bit of a loss. However, this whole channel is about trying new things, seeing what works and what doesn't. So today, Let's get on to testing the sand test with intercooler fans and see what sort of difference they make. So guys, just a couple of quick constants for this test that we're gonna be doing today on the sand. I have lowered the tire pressures of the cruiser. However, I haven't lowered them as down as far as I normally go. I've left it at about mid 20 PSI, which is fine for a beach like this. This will also put the engine under a little bit more load just to see how it reacts with and without those fans. I'm gonna try where I can to stay up on the uh, higher stuff where it's a little bit softer. And then after this uh, beach run, we're gonna go into some inland dunes where we can really get into the soft stuff and see what sort of difference those fans really make. So we're gonna be conducting a number of tests today with and without the fans attached to the cruiser. This is gonna consist of an acceleration test just like we did on the highway. We're also gonna have a low speed beach test as well, say about 40 kilometers an hour. We're also gonna do a higher speed beach test and that will depend on what sort of uh, speeds we can get up to here on the beach, but I'm thinking it may be around the 70 kilometer mark. Whichever it is on the first test, we'll keep it constant for the second test. And then we're gonna move on into the inland dune system. Just gonna set up a uh, small one or minute or so uh, route through the dunes, including both hard and soft sand. And we're, again, we're gonna be doing it with and without the fan attached, just to see what sort of difference it makes to those charged air temperatures. So uh, let's start this testing without the fans and see how we go. Now quickly mention as well, the assumption we're gonna make during these tests are that the lower the charged air intake temperatures received by the onboard computer, the more efficient the intercooler is cooling down the intake air. So it's the same assumption we made in our highway testing, we're gonna do the same thing in today's video. Okay, so just like in our last test, we're gonna be hooking up to the uh, laptop here, just via the OBD two port scanner, and connecting uh, up through to our detect stream software. This is gonna give us uh, access to a lot of our uh, data that normally isn't available through your factory uh, inf infotainment and dash. This will give us our charged air intakes along with all the other temperature readings we need for this test. So it was time to start with our acceleration test with the stock factory setup. With all tests today, I attempted to keep all variables as constant as possible, choosing identical lines in the sand. The tests were progressive and conducted one after another with no fans and then repeated immediately after the fans were fitted to avoid any changes in environmental factors. For the acceleration test, the vehicle was stationary for roughly five minutes prior to each test, which would account for similar heat soak. So the next test we're gonna do here is our slow speed beach run. We're gonna stay up high on the beach just to put the engine under that little bit more load. So aiming for about 40 kilometers an hour, again in high range. We're the same for both tests. So this is without fans and uh, let's give it a go. So as with all the other tests, the exact same section of beach was used for all the tests for various speeds. I remained on the same lines which were existing sand runs from previous traffic. So there we go, it's exactly 2 kilometers or 40 kilometers an hour. We then moved on to our 60 km hour and 80 km hour tests respectively. So I returned to the initial starting point and installed the fans as described in my previous video. Now quickly, I need to mention that I received comments regarding the cutouts or the holes in the brackets that I made for these fans. Viewers commented stating this is the reason for the forced air escaping from around the fans, therefore losing efficiency. 
Now I can guarantee that the air is not exiting from these cutouts. I can't demonstrate this on camera, how it is very obvious to, and easy to tell that the back pressure is returning from within the radius of each fan, as I attempted to explain in my first video. With all the fans wired up, it was time to conduct the tests again. As mentioned before, the testing was conducted on the exact same section of beach and each drive was on the same line and the same distances. Now again, the tyres are only lowered down to about 25 psi for this test. The idea here is that the tyres may dig in a little more and provide a little more load for the engine, therefore the boost pressure and higher intake temperatures. So we've now completed our constant speed beach runs at 40, 60 and 80 kilometers an hour and including an accelerate test as well. It's now time to move on into some inland dunes. Now the purpose of this test is it's going to give us some variety. Uh, we're not going to be at that constant speed. We'll have a few flat sections. We'll have some downhills, some uphills. It's only going to be a short route, but it's going to see whether or not those charge air intakes are affected by the fans. And more so, it's also going to give us an idea as to whether or not those charged air intakes uh, will the reduced ones on either with or without fans actually give us any more usable power that we need to get up some of the little sand hills that we'll need to do on this route. So I'll hop into the dunes, we'll get a few videos along the way, we'll measure the results with and without the fans, and we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. The terrain was mixed, from soft windblow and dune tops to relatively hard packed sand tracks. It gave a varying testing ground and differing levels of load on the engine. Although the speed was varied, I attempted to simulate similar driving styles and similar speeds for both routes for the tests. This completes the tests for today and it's time to head back to the computer and compare the results for each scenario. So first up is our accelerate test. Now this test is similar to the one that we conducted with our highway tests, however in a new environment and with a heavier load placed onto the engine. In order to understand these graphs, we observe a blue line which represents the ambient temperature. During all the tests today, we observe this to be at 30 degrees Celsius. The yellow and green lines represent the intake temps with and without the fans installed respectively. This measurement is taken from immediately after the air filter and generally sits a few degrees higher than ambient. The fans do not affect these temperatures in any way. We can see that from today's test that the intake temps without the fans were sitting 4 degrees higher than the test with the fans. Now most importantly we need to take note of the red and grey lines. These represent the charged air intake temperatures with and without the fans installed and is measured at the rear of the intercooler after the air has been turbocharged and passed through the intercooler. It is clear to see the point of acceleration and the slight delay in the increase of temperatures as the engine works hard under load. We observed the factory intercooler without fans makes a peak temperature quicker, even though it's recorded a delay in the initial increase. The peaks without the fans were 75 degrees, while the fans recorded a peak of 83 degrees. Already we have seen that the temperature difference increase from 6 degrees at the start to 8 degrees at the peak. As we back off, we see the temperatures slowly decrease, however even after allowing the vehicle to idle down to 60 km an hour, we see the difference between the charged air intake temperatures has now increased to 10 degrees. If we take the averages from this test, we can see that the factory school art setup without fans, we average 67 degrees, and with the fans, we average 76 degrees. Now moving on to our 40 km an hour constant speed test, we observe that the charged air intake temperatures without the fans start higher on that this test. Now that is due to the fact that these tests were continuous, meaning that if the fans were inefficient during the previous test, they would start at or near that previous temperature. In this test, we said that there are starting differences is 10 degrees, and we can identify the point at which both tests observed an increase in temperatures. At this point, we see a difference has diminished to only 9 degrees, and further only 5 degrees at the 3 quarter mark. At the end of the test, we can observe that the fans have only 1 degree benefit over a 2 km run. To put that into a timeline, we are looking at about 220 seconds or a little short of 4 minutes to achieve a benefit at this speed. Measuring the averages, we look at about 75 degrees without the fans and 82 degrees with the fans fitted. Now during testing, I didn't notice that these temperatures were so close together. 
If I did, I would have continued the testing time for a longer period to see whether or not that difference between the two would increase or decrease. Now onto the 60 km hour test. Now as mentioned before with these progressive tests, we can see that there's one degree difference at the start of this test. Between each test we did come to a stop and had to accelerate up to speed again and that explains that gentle increase in temperatures during the first half of these results. Peak temperatures are reached after acceleration and we can see 112 degrees without the fans and 118 degrees with the fans. Again we can see a slight delay in the peak temperatures although higher when the fans were installed. The temperatures were given some time to normalise during the constant speed test and after 2 kilometres of driving and we can still see there is a difference of 5 degrees. Averages again on this test were 104 degrees without the fans and 109 degrees with the fans installed. Moving straight on to the 80 km hour constant speed test. As per our highway tests in my last video, we can see a significant advantage for the factory intercooler setup over the fans. I allowed for a greater testing time during this test given that 2 km distance would not be enough time to accurately summarise the results. We drove on the same section of beach for approximately 4 minutes on each test. Starting with a 6 degree temperature difference, we reached a peak difference of 15 degrees with the fans producing a very high 120 degree peak. Now this 15 degree difference was maintained for some time, however after a few minutes there was little variance. We can see that for most of the test the trend lines were parallel and decreasing after initial acceleration, however towards the end of the test the fans begin to take on a flat trend, while the factory setup was still downwards. This resulted in final temps of 75 and 97 degrees with a huge 22 degree difference between these tests. Again, averaging out we can see that with no fans we averaged 90 degrees and with our fans installed we got 107 degrees. Now finally onto our low speed sand dune test. We observed that just entering the dunes and setting up for the test we got an increased charged air intake temperature with the fans installed and the difference here starts at 23 degrees. Now this test was conducted in low range four wheel drive and the average speed was only 18 kilometers per hour. Now in this test we can again see those trend lines come closer together over the period of the test. Midway through we see the temperature of 65 and 80 degrees reducing the difference from 23 degrees to only 15. Finally finishing up at 74 and 83 degrees with a difference of 9. If we flatten these lines out we see the progressive upward trend from the factory setup is significant. When comparing this to the trend of the aftermarket fans, although we see that it still increases, it manages to slow down the rate of increase. Again, quickly touching on averages, we observed the factory setup to run at 62 degrees and the fans to be run at 78 degrees. So guys, they're the results I got from the side-by-side -side testing with the stock factory intercooler and the fans installed when driving on beach sand. And there's a few things we can see, a few observations we can get from these side-by-side -side tests. Firstly, we can say that in general, the stock factory intercooler setup is a little bit more efficient in keeping those charged air intakes down, particularly with some form of airflow. Secondly, we can definitely see that during the low speed, higher low tests with the 40 km hour test and the sand dune test, we can see that those trend lines do start to come together. However, it does take some time to occur. And thirdly, with any sort of airflow with the 60 and 80 km hour tests that we did, we can see that the stock factory intercooler setup is generally going to be a lot more efficient and provide much, much cooler charged air intake temperatures over that with the fans installed. So from these observations, we can make a couple of assumptions in regards to the intercooler fan. Firstly, in general, the stock factory intercooler setup is going to be more efficient in reducing those charged air intake temperatures than with fans installed. And secondly, unless you plan on doing consistent and prolonged low speed beach runs or really, really heavy work at very slow speed, say in a dune for a long period of time, then these intercooler fans really aren't going to provide much of a benefit. The testing today was only a short time frame. However, further testing would need to be undertaken to see whether or not those trend lines do actually meet or cross over at any point if you were to continue to drive in those circumstances for a longer period of time. So there is a bunch of considerations you need to keep in mind if you are thinking about installing intercooler fans on your vehicle. Now the first one is if you are planning on driving prolonged at low speed or prolonged high loads at low speed, for example the dunes or 40 km an hour and less, further testing is going to be required to see whether or not these fans actually provide a benefit. Secondly, you need to keep in mind that if you are planning on driving low speeds for a prolonged period of time, you're going to be using light to moderate throttle to maintain or even gently increase that speed. Therefore, a small degree or small change in the charged air intake temperatures really isn't going to make much of a difference to the power required to maintain or gently increase those speeds. 
So a popular thought with these intercooler fans is that they reduce all forms of heat soak and provide a lower charge air intake temperatures at low speed or uh, during rock crawling or low range four wheel driving. Now, although technically correct, you have to keep in mind that you're not gonna be needing optimal power at those low speeds and during those low power situations. If in the rare case you do need optimal power, say to climb a small soft sand dune during one of those circumstances, then that small amount of power increase you get from those lower charge to air intake temperatures is really gonna not make much of a difference. Now a reputable mechanic or reputable company in Australia has estimated that these fans alone can produce up to about 15 kilowatts of power. Now I have no way of personally verifying that, but if we go off that, that's not a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. And that brings me on to the next point. These 200 series have a huge amount of power and torque and the likelihood of you needing an extra 15 kilowatts of power during those circumstances is very, very rare. So further consideration needs to be given to your style of driving and where you plan on using your vehicle. As mentioned in my last video with the highway testing, the fans did provide a little bit of a detriment to the charge air intake temperatures at higher speed as we've also seen at the 16 to 80 km hour tests we've done today on sand. So for example, this vehicle might be used two to 3% of the time when driving at less than 40 kilometers an hour or in a high load situation like dune driving. And that would come at a detriment to 97 or 98% of the time when I'm out on the highway. So for me personally, it wouldn't make sense to fit the intercooler fans to lose that efficiency out on the highway. Like I also mentioned in my last video, if you are serious about lowering your charged air intake temperatures, consider replacing the entire factory unit with either a unit that is designed and to suit intercooler fans and higher airflow, or even replace it with something like an air to water cooler, which is gonna be a lot more efficient and therefore provide those much reduced charged air intake temperatures. So we do know that reduced charged air intake temperatures do provide a benefit to these vehicles. We see that in top end drag races, we can sometimes see dry ice be used to cool the intercooler down immediately prior to a race. And we have also heard data which shows that these fans can produce a benefit on dyno runs. So if you are planning on drag racing a 200 series or doing multiple dyno runs or multiple hard acceleration tests, then maybe these fans will provide the edge that you need. Now there is one more scenario where these fans might provide a benefit to this cruiser and that is towing a heavy load or putting the engine under a heavy load whilst executing difficult terrain. Now an example of this would be towing a heavy caravan up a prolonged hill for example and this is a reasonable real world example. Now my prediction is that the fans will provide a benefit at those really low speeds if you were to get to those low speeds. However, if there's any sort of reasonable airflow, what we've discovered from both the highway testing and the sand tests is that this intercooler is really efficient at cooling and more efficient than using the fans when there's any sort of airflow provided. But rather than just assume this, this will be something I will endeavor to test in the next few months and I'll make sure to make a video and let you guys know how I go. So guys, there we go, there's my results and some of my thoughts and rationale behind not fitting these fans to my 200 series Land Cruiser. Now I just wanna say again that I'm not out here to prove anyone right or wrong. And I'm not invested, sponsored, endorsed or paid to promote or disprove the results from these fans. I'm just here to endeavor to release some of the information I've found from fitting these fans to my stock intercooler on my 200 series Land Cruiser. This is in the hope that I can provide some information so that people out there can make informed decisions in relation to whether or not these fans will work well for their vehicle and their application. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.